Hello gamers and welcome back to another episode of Solo Spelunking. And today it'll be a first because today I will be doing my very first review on this channel. And um, I was asked to do a review by a viewer in the comment section of um, Shadow Dark and Dragonbane. And I was also asked um, one or two times already uh, what I think or which game I think is better for solo play or uh, in general. So I decided, well, why not? Um, there's always a time for a first. I will do a comparative review on my channel and I will be reviewing the Shadow Dark RPG and I will it will be a comparative review to the Dragon Bane core box set. And um, before I start, a couple of disclaimers. First thing is, of course, I'm not a professional game designer. I'm a gamer, I'm a player, and at best I'm an amateur hobby game designer because I've done some games, as you know, if you were following my channel, like Explorers of the Untamed Wilds, Slums of Flun, Outlaws in the Outer Fringe, and, um, but this is not my business and I don't have the experience of a professional game designer and also I'm not a professional gaming journalist that has done thousands of reviews. So this review is my own personal opinion based on my experiences playing these games as a solo gamer. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that I think both of these games are good games. And um, yeah, because I've, I've used them both. I've played a Dragonbane uh, or still, but it's on hold right now, my Dragonbane campaign with Nerys the Thief. And I've used a Dragon Bane to play a Star Wars series that I just finished, Narshada Manhunt. And I've used Shadow Dark for the April 24 solo RPG challenge. And also in my current Star Dark uh, campaign or series, I'm using it. Because for me, I think if you do a review, it is important that you have some experiences with actually, or some experience with actually playing these games. So I'm not a guy who would do like like armchair flip through reviews without having played these. So this is just my personal opinion. I think both of these games are good. They have their strengths and weaknesses. And at the end of this review, I will give you my verdict from a solo gamer's point of view. Um, so I will be going first or talk about first about the core mechanics. Then I will go into the classes and the creation process. Then advancement, combat and lethality, magic, gear and encumbrance. Then I will say something about other stuff that makes each game unique. And finally, I will give you my verdict. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, let's just, I leave that here. <clears throat> As a reminder, let's just start with the core mechanics. Shadow Dark uses a d20 rollover system, meaning you roll 1d20, you add a modifier, which is usually a bonus based on your stat or some bonus you get from a talent. Um, talents are things that every class gets or maybe because of some form of equipment or anything. And it uses an advantage-disadvantage mechanic as well. So if you have some beneficial circumstances or um, certain special training because of your background maybe, or your class states that you have um, training in certain areas, you roll with advantage, meaning you roll 2d20, take the higher one, and hindering circumstances impose disadvantage and then they cancel each other advantage cancels disadvantage or if you just have disadvantage you just roll 2d20 and use the lower one shadow dark does not have skills 
in the classic sense. So you have a background that gives you some general knowledge in certain areas and your class will give you some knowledge in certain areas which will allow you to roll with advantage. Other than that, you basically use your stats and Shadow Dark encourages to problem solving through description and role playing rather than rolling checks. It is scalable. You have four different standard difficult classes that you need to meet or beat with your role. That is the difficulty class of 9, 12, 15 or 18. So you can scale the difficulty of a task depending on, you th uh, on what you think how difficult it is by choosing uh, one of those DC and then you just roll your d20. So it is roll high, meet or beat a target number. Dragonbane, on the other hand, is a d20 roll under system. So here it also uses the advantage-disadvantage mechanic, which is called boons and banes in Shadow Dark, uh, excuse me, in Dragonbane. And um, it has, uh, in direct comparison to, to Dragonbane, uh, to, damn it, I gotta get this straight, to Shadow Dark, it has a lot of skills. It is a skill-focused game. Actually, Dragonbane has 30 core skills. 30 core skills. And um, your basic attributes determine your, your base chance in every skill. Skills are tied to attributes. And whenever you um, roll to complete a task or to seek, succeed at a task, you actually mostly roll against or with using a skill. You only roll an attribute check if no skill fits. But because of those 30 core skills, you basically have skills for a lot of typical role-playing tasks. So this is a skill-focused roll under d20 game, while this is more like an, an attribute, more general, background, narrative-focused, roll-over kind of system. The thing here with Dragonbane is that you can't really scale a difficulty other than using boons and banes. So, for example, um, if you play uh, Shadow Dark and you have a very complicated lock, um, you could say, all right, it's a DC 15 instead of a DC 12. And then you could also impose advantage, disadvantage, depending on situations or, or, or skills. So let's say you are a thief, you get advantage on picking locks, but it's also uh, very dimly lit because you uh, expended your, your last torch. So then the DM might say, all right, you would have advantage because you're a thief, but disadvantage because it's dark, it cancels each other. So you roll versus DC 15 because this DC 15 um, represents the difficulty of the lock. In Dragonbane, you have your skill, let's say open locks, and it's like say 12. So we have to roll between one and 12. And then it also will be either advantage or disadvantage, boon or bane, depending on the situation. But you always roll, you always have like the 60% chance. There's no no slider for the difficulty depending on, on the lock. So you would have to, to house rule this uh, in Dragonbane if you would basically then apply a bonus or a penalty to the roll if you want to simulate this. So this is what I mean with not really scalable. You have your set chance defined by your skill and the advantage-disadvantage mechanic, boon or bane. And here you have different difficulty classes as well. So here it actually, for me, comes down to pure personal preference. I like both systems because I basically grew up with the 20 roll under playing the dark eye in Germany as a teenager, which is like the major German role playing game. But I've also played D20 games long enough since D&D 3.5, 3.x, 3.0, whatever, Pathfinder, that I really like both systems. I like rolling D20s. I think the D20 is an elegant looking die. I like rolling it. And I 
don't really care if I have to roll high or low. So here for me, it is just personal preference. Um, I can't really give you, give you a verdict here. And um, so this depends on what you like um, as a core mechanic when, when choosing your system. All right, so let's get into classes and the character creation process. Both systems are race and class systems, or it is now called ancestry and class in Shadow Dark. The races are called ancestries in Dragonbane. They're called kin. Shadow Dark features six classic fantasy ancestries, dwarf, elf, goblin, halfling, half-orc, and human. And it features four core classes, the fighter, the thief, the priest, and the wizard. And if you count the official ranger and bard classes, which were released as a stretch goal, it also uh, you could also include these. So that'll be six classes. I'm not, for this review, I'm not looking at the third party market out there and all those different supplements. I'm just going by the official stuff. So that would be six classes and six ancestries. Dragonbane features six kin. You also have humans, halflings, dwarves, elves, and then the Dragonbane specific mallard, which are basically duck people, and the wolfkin, which are wolf people, beastmen, if you will. Dragonbane then again features 10 professions, which are like the classes in Dragonbane. And these are the artisan, the bard, the fighter, the hunter, which is like the ranger, the knight, which is like a paladin, the mage, the mariner, which is a sailor, a merchant, a scholar, and the classic thief. So both are and I'm sticking to race and class because it just is more fluently. Both are race class systems. So how do these classes compare? In Shadow Dark, I think in my opinion, classes are more defining and more limiting than in Dragonbane. So your classes, they give you um, a set amount of or a set um, a set of skills and they're also restricting because they tell you what kind of armor you wear you can wear what kind of weapon you can use so they're defining and somewhat restricting but they're also pretty simple and there's no multi-classing in either of these systems classes and dragon bane are more flexible and customizable because of their skill-based system. So in Dragonbane, like, let's say if as a standard you start as an adult, you would get a total of 10 trained skills. And from these 10 trained skills, you need to pick six skills from your profession or class specific skill list. So every class in Dragonbane comes with a skill list. And six of your trained skills must come from this skill list. But the other four skills, you can pick any skills that you want. So let's say if you have two fighters, two fighters are probably not really the same because you have four skills to, to customize them. And also those six skills that you pick come from a list of fighter skills that, of course, encompasses more than six skills, because otherwise it wouldn't be a choice. So you can have two fighters with 10 maybe very different skills and also different flavors. So you could have a fighter who also took like thieving skills, or you could have a fighter who took more academic skills. And so this is basically what I mean by the classes are more customizable and more flexible. So in Shadow Dark, it's like, here's your fighter. He can do this and um, you get this, this talent role basically. And, and here you, you can give every class 
a personal touch, you have more player agency. For generating characters, both systems provide a checklist where you can basically um, check off the steps and create your character. So that is pretty nice. And mm, yeah, Shadow Dark has, I think, a quicker generation process. Both systems use six core stats or abilities. Shadow Dark uses the standard six that you know from Dungeons and Dragons and Dragonbane uses similar stats. And here the generation process as written is just rolled 3d6 down the line and here it is 4d6 drop the lowest and you can assign your rolled score after you have rolled it before you roll the next score. So here you have some player agency and you have on average a little higher attribute scores because you roll 46 drop lowest. So Dragon Bane gives you more flexibility, more player agency when it comes to creating your character. You can customize the classes more, you can pick a heroic ability, which is something like a feat, and you have the option of assigning every stat after you roll it. Here it is pretty simple, 3d6 down the line, you get your class abilities or talents, you roll once on the talent table and that's it, you're done. Pretty quick. So both I think has advantages, disadvantages. Um, Dragonbane, more fidelity and flexibility, but it also takes longer and it can also be a bit overwhelming for beginners if you're just starting out, because if you're a beginner, you probably do not really have the experience to know which skills are more useful than others in a typical role-playing session or role-playing situation. And you also might have this decision paralysis when it comes to choosing skills out of those 30 core skills, choosing your 10 skills. And also here every starting character gets a heroic ability, which is defined by your class, but the rulebook explicitly states that with permission of the GM, you could also choose a different heroic ability. So also here you have to make choices. And I have to say, you can really make bad choices here. So there are um, heroic abilities that are objectively, I think, more powerful definitely than others. Um, for example, um, there's a, a heroic ability which gives you, if you take it, plus two HP. Wow. But then there's heroic ability, which is called like uh, fast footwork, which allows you basically uh, by spending three willpower points to dodge or evade an attack without using your action for it. And we will get to this. So this is objectively a far better choice than gaining two additional hit points. So if you're a, a newer player, a less experienced player, it is easy here to make bad choices. And also this might lead to the tendency to try to, to create optimized, mechanically optimized characters. You don't have this here. But then again, this might be personal preference. This is way quicker and way more beginner friendly than Dragonbane. So that's the part about classes and the creation process. Now we come to advancement. So Shadow Dark uses a classic experience system to level up, but you do not get experience points for killing stuff. You get experience points for retrieving treasure and for spending money and carousing after an adventure. Then you will get experience points and you need your current level times 10 experience points to level up. And after that, your experience points reset to zero and then you collect them again um, until you level up again. So here you collect experience points and you get these by retrieving treasure, by spending money, by carousing, not for killing stuff. 
and Dragonbane does not use an experience point or level mechanic at all. So there is no character level in Dragonbane. As I said, it is a skill-based system. And here it works like this. Whenever you roll a dragon, which is a natural one, like a critical success, or a demon, which is a 20 critical failure, uh, on a skill check, you can put a check mark, an advancement mark, next to the skill where you rolled this um, dragon or demon. And every skill can have only one advancement mark. And then after the session, after every session, the GM asks every player five questions regarding the session. And for every question they can answer with yes, and the GM is supposed to be lenient here, they can place an advancement mark on a skill of their choice. And after the advancement marks are placed, you roll 1d20 and you have to roll over your current skill value and then the skill value goes up by 1. There is no way to increase basic attribute scores in Dragonbane, uh, unless I've overlooked it. And also you do not automatically gain more hit points. So your hit points are based on your constitution score, or bronze score I think it is, I don't know, on your physical score, and this does not increase. <clears throat> so this is how advancement works in Dragonbane. And in Shadow Dark, when you gain a level, you roll your hit die for your class, as you're probably used to in D20-based systems. And at every odd level, you get another roll on your class's talent table. And the talent table is the table that gives your class certain special bonuses tailored to your class. So also here, again, very beginner-friendly. You do not have a lot of player agency or choice. It is basically random. And here again, um, yeah, you have to, to make the choices where to place the check marks, which skills to improve. And also, this system here might lead to you gaming the system. For example, as I mentioned, um, you need to roll over your skill value to improve it. So if you have a skill value of 12, you need to roll at least a 13 on a d20. It's a natural roll, no bonus, to increase it. And if it's at 14, it's even more difficult. So the better you get, the more difficult it is to become better, which is, of course, logic. But... The skills that are not trained have a very low base chance, anywhere between like four, five, or six. So if you want to get the most out of your advancement, you would actually place the advancement marks on skills that you are not trained in and that you haven't used a lot to have a better chance of gaining some benefit and of increasing these skills. Because if you fail your advancement role, unless you pay a lot of money for a teacher, which can grant you another advancement role, this is it. So if you're very unlucky, there might be no advancement at all after a session because you fail all your advancement roles. So here again, it comes down to if you want more flexibility, customizability and player agency, then maybe Dragonbane is for you. And if you want a quick semi-random advancement and don't want to ponder too long about what would be the best choice, then maybe Shadow Dark is for you. Yeah, so um, I will give you my verdict at the end of the video. I'm just basically now stating the facts. So now, Combat and Lethality. Both systems use round-based combat, where you have an action and a move during your turn in a combat round, and in both systems you can use your action if you want to, to make instead another move. Otherwise, your action is used for things like casting spells, attacking, maybe performing some complicated action, improvise, whatnot. Dragonbane has more detailed combat rules. Dragonbane ex 
explicitly mentions grid-based combat. The, the basic set also comes with a grid map. It has some rules for um, grid movement, it has rules for attacks of opportunity, and also rules for traversing difficult terrain. But you can also play Dragonbane in a theater of mind style if you want to. So Dragonbane uses exact measures in meters, but it's not so dependent on the grid, like for example, fourth edition D&D was with shifting and pushing and, and, and sliding enemies all the time and areas of effect. So you could play Dragonbane also theater of mind, but it does mention a grid, it comes with a grid and it has more detailed combat rules, if you will. Shadow Dark, um, on the other hand, uses abstract categories for distance. It uses close for melee distance, near and far. It does not provide any rules for grid-based movement. It also does not have rules for attacks of opportunity. You can move freely. You can even move through opponents with a check. And it encourages more theater of mind style combat. Dragonbane uses a card based system for initiative where you draw initiative cards every round. So initiative is also redetermined every round. And once you have acted, you flip your initiative card to indicate that you have acted and you go from low to high. Shadow Dark uses a standard dexterity based d20 role to determine who goes first, but you only determine who goes first and from this person initiative moves clockwise around the table and it is only determined once per combat. So that is the quicker approach. This is the more um, also tactile approach where you have to handle some cards and stuff. Dragonbane features an active defense mechanism. So here you can parry and evade an enemy attack uh, that hit you and armor provides damage reduction in Dragonbane. So um, here, if you have a high uh, defense score in like evade or parry or the, the, the weapon ability, um, you could use your action if you did not get to go before your opponent in this round. You could use your action instead to react to his attack if it's successful and try to parry or evade it to avoid taking damage. But this will use your, your action in the round. Shadow Dark does not have this mechanism. It has the standard armor class SDC mechanism. But here, uh, and this is what I think is good, it explicitly states in the book that armor class represents how difficult it is to injure you, not to hit you. And this difficulty can come because you're agile or because you're heavily armored. Because I read a lot of times like, well, this AC system does not make a lot of sense. How come armor makes you more difficult to hit? Well, this is not true. It makes you not more difficult to hit. It makes you harder to injure. And Shadow Dark explicitly states that. And this is something I just wanted to note that because I think that is good. Um, one thing with Dragonbane here is that you don't really have the opportunity or a possibility to make it harder for your enemy to hit you. So the success chance of your enemy solely depends on his active combat skill. So if an enemy has like a 14 in his combat skill, every roll between one and 14 will hit you. And of course you can wear better armor, but then you will just have higher damage reduction, but we will get to lethality. This is not that important in my opinion. It would be better if you had some way of making yourself harder to hit. Dragon Bane, um, Shadow Dark, damn, so Shadow Dark does have the option because you can increase your dexterity stat while leveling up. 
If you improve your dexterity bonus, it makes you harder to injure, not harder to hit, harder to injure because you're agile. Only a small step. And also if you wear better armor, you're harder to injure. But this has a bigger impact, I think, in Shadow Dark than it has in Dragon Bane. So this is something I don't really like about Dragon Bane. If, you, if your enemy has a very high combat skill, if he has the initiative, he will probably also... Um, hit you every round. Well, this is true for high level enemies in Shadow Dark as well, but at least here you have the small option of um, trying to make it a little bit harder on your enemy by improving your stats. So let's get to Lethality. Both systems are very lethal. In Dragonbane, you have slightly higher starting hit points, but they do not increase much. While as in Shadow Dark, you start or you can start with a very low hit point count, but you do get to roll your hit die every level, but you do not get to add your constitution modifier to your roll. So both systems are very lethal because also in Dragonbane the damage amounts are very high, the number of dice you roll. So for an example, a normal dagger does 1d8 points of damage and a broadsword like the normal classic sword already does 2d8 points of damage and you also get a damage bonus based on your strength uh, if you get a bonus, it'll be at least a d4, it, but it can also go up to a d6 or even a d8. So let's say you only have a d4 damage bonus and you use a broadsword. You would deal 2d8 plus 1d4 points of damage. And this is in conjunction with what I said before, that if your enemy has like a skill of, let's say, 12, he has a 60% chance of hitting you every round. And if he has a broadsword, and let's just say he does not have a damage bonus, he will still deal 2d8 points of damage. And average damage reduction is anywhere between like, I don't know, maybe like 2 or 4 points of damage. So that, that can be reduced. Um, so if you have like light armor or a helmet. So you see, um, damage reduction in relation to the amount of average damage that is incoming every round, in my opinion does not have such a huge impact in Dragonbane as it has in Shadow Dark when you increase your AC, um, where if the attack is not successful, you do not suffer any damage. But here you start with a lot fewer HP, so the, the basic message is that both systems are very lethal and it is possible to one-shot a player character, at least in the early stages of the game, and that is a real possibility and danger in both systems. So they both allow the possibility of one-shotting a character. All right, so we come to magic. In Dragonbane, I think the magic system is more complex. You have a limited number of spells you can hold prepared in your memory, and this is determined by your intelligence score. However, casting a spell does not remove them from your memory. So every memory, uh, every spell you have prepared in your memory, you can cast. But in order to cast a spell, you also need to roll to cast against your skill, depending on your school of magic. So there are different schools of magic in Dragonbane. And you also need to spend willpower points, which is like a resource in Dragonbane you use to fuel your special heroic abilities or your spells in this case also. And how much willpower points you need depends on how powerful the spell is. So in Dragonbane, you have a limited number of spells you can hold in your mind prepared. You need to roll to cast and you also need to fuel your spells with willpower. 
and you can only learn spells from your school of magic or the general magic category. So it's somewhat complex and a little bit fiddly. Their magic tricks here, cantrips, which um, you can cast at will, you don't need to roll, but they still cost one willpower point to cast. And also some spells you can only learn if you have learned another spell before. So some spells have prerequisites, like for example, the flight spell, there you need the levitate spell first in order to be able to learn the flight spell. You can also cast spells that you have not prepared from your spell book, which is called a grimoire in Dragonbane, but this takes longer, longer casting time. And Dragonbane does not feature clerics or priests, so there are no real cleric or priest spells in Dragonbane. Also, as a mage, you can, of course, wear armor if you want to, but metal impairs casting. So if you have any metal on your body, wearing on your body, or a metal weapon, you cannot cast. But items in your inventory or backpack, they do not count. So that is Dragonbane. Compared to Dragonbane, Shadow Dark is very simple. It has a very simple magic system. You have no spell book, you have no spell slots, and you do not need to spend any form of points to cast spells. You know a number of spells per spell tire according to your level. And once you level up, you just learn new spells until you have reached your number of known spells. And you can cast every spell you know. You do not need to prepare it. It's not stored in a spell book. But you have to make a spellcasting roll. The spellcasting roll is either intelligence for wizard spells or wisdom for cleric or priest spells. And the DC is 10 plus the tire of the spell. So a tier 1 spell would be a DC 11 wisdom or intelligence check. And on a failure, you cannot cast this spell again until you complete a rest. But you can still cast other spells. But if you succeed at the spell casting role, you could cast this spell over and over again. So there are no spell slots, no willpower points. It's just roll to cast. And if you fail the roll, you lose the spell for the day. After the rest, you can cast it again. And both games also use a mishap table if you roll a critical failure, like a demon in Dragonbane or a natural one in Shadow Dark, then you have to roll on a mishap table and see what happens. So that's the magic system. Now let's come to gear and encumbrance. Both systems use a gear slot system, meaning you have a certain number of slots that you can fill with items. And in general, most items take up one slot. There are a few exceptions. Some smaller items could be bundled into one slot, but in this case it is stated explicitly in the book which items qualify for that. But, in my opinion, Dragonbane is unnecessarily, unnecessarily fiddly. Shadow Dark is pretty simple. It just says you either have your strength score or 10, whichever is higher, gear slots that you can fill, period, and everything counts. Armor, weapons, torches, the first backpack you can carry for free. But other than that, everybody, everything, almost everything needs a slot. In Dragonbane, they make it unnecessarily complicated because they say your gear slots are half your strength score. I think round it up or down, doesn't really matter. But then again, you have different methods of carrying stuff that does not occupy a gear slot. So the armor you're wearing does not occupy gear slots and the weapons you have prepared on your belt or body, they do not use gear slots. 
and things you have in your inventory, they occupy gear slots. And then there are some things that are free to carry, tiny items. But I think Shadow Dark has these also. So for me, this is unnecessarily fiddly because they basically reduce your gear slots artificially by just having your strength. But then they saw somehow try to balance it out by making certain items not count towards your gear slots, depending on where you carry them. And I think this is an unnecessarily overcomplication. Just give yourself a certain number of gear slots, strength or 10, whatever's higher, and be done with it. And everything basically um, counts. So, um, yeah, that is how both of these systems handle gear and encumbrance. Then we come to other stuff. With other stuff, I mean things that are unique to each system that give us the distinct flair. In Dragonbane, for me, this distinct flair is Dragonbane has a division or a, a, yeah, a division or a, a, a differentiation, I think is the better word, between NPC or humanoid opponents and enemies and classic monsters. Humanoid opponents like orcs, goblins, also skeletons. They use the standard combat rules. So they have combat skills, they roll to attack, they deal damage according to their weapon. But monsters have slightly different combat rules. Every monster has a custom tailored monster attack table. And from that table, the GM can either choose or roll randomly which attack the monster uses, and monster attacks do always hit. So the monster does not roll to hit. It always deals some sort of damage or applies some effect. The limitation for the GM is that a monster does not rule, uh, use the same attack twice in a row. So you can choose the same attack twice if it's a very effective attack you have to choose something else in between if you roll randomly and you roll the same thing again you just move down one entry in the table and use that attack instead so monster attack tables are in dragon bane that give each monster a unique flavor but also monsters never miss they always apply their effect however monster attacks can be evaded or dodged with the evade skill but they can normally not parry it. So here also, um, yeah, you need the evade skill if you want to dodge a monster attack. And then, of course, if you don't have the right heroic ability, it'll also use your action. So that is the thing I think that is unique to Dragon Bane, the special division between monsters and NPCs. And uh, monsters have also a ferocity rating. This is how dangerous they are because they're usually facing a party. And for every ferocity rating, they get basically an attack. So a ferocity three monster can make three monster attacks per round if it is facing a party, but also a single player hero. So that is Dragonbane specific. For Shadow Dark, of course, the thing that makes it unique is the role of light in the game and light sources. So Shadow Dark, and this is where also it's got its name from, all these dark dungeons, those deep forests, the dark canyons, these are all there, all the Shadow Dark. And the Shadow Dark is a deadly environment if you do not have a light source. So no player race in Shadow Dark has dark or infra vision. There is no way for player characters, rules as written, to see in the dark. On the other hand, all monsters you encounter in the Shadow Dark are dark adapted. They can see and function in the dark perfectly. And once your light source runs out, once you're completely in the dark, the environment becomes deadly which means you roll for a random encounter. The GM rolls for a random encounter, wandering monster every, every round. And so this is what makes Shadow Dark unique together with the mechanism 
that as written it is intended to be played in real time at least when you're crawling and one torch lasts exactly one hour of real time. For me, I think this is an interesting flair when it comes to delving, dungeon delving and, and dangerous environments. However, the part of it being in real time, for me, this is nothing more than a marketing gag, excuse me, because if you play it, you will see that it falls apart pretty soon in game. Because unless you're really just crawling, then it makes sense to like uh, have it in real time when you describe how you basically explore a room. But if you rest, if you let's just say, all right, so uh, you have explored a room and then you go, all right, let's just take 10 minutes here to, to catch our breath, to readjust our armor and take a zip of, of water or have a half a ration, you will not probably sit around the table for 10 minutes doing nothing. So then you would advance the torch timer basically by 10 minutes. Or also overland travel. But if you travel, of course, by daylight, it doesn't matter uh, because then you don't need a torch. It's, it's uh, not dark. So this might make, make sense when you're actually crawling to play in real time. But for me, as soon or as yeah as soon as you do something that takes a little bit longer like maybe making a short repair on your armor or sewing a hole in your backpack or all these little things that take like 5 or 10 minutes then it already falls apart and you will probably have to advance the torch timer by the amount of time passed so i think for me sorry kelsey i really like your game but this real-time playing is nothing like a marketing gag that you can say it's the game that is played in real time. In actual play, at least in solo play, maybe this is my, my solo player viewpoint, it falls apart pretty soon. However, that darkness is a threat and the constant need to have a light source, I think is pretty, pretty nice. And you can also instill tension with this mechanic without playing in real time. So... This is the other stuff that makes these games unique. All right, so let's come to the verdict. And what I will do is I will go through each category again and give you my verdict in each category. And then we will have a final result. And again, disclaimer, I think both games are good. And this is a review from a solo gamer's perspective. So if you play this in a group, you might come to a different conclusion. So the first part, core mechanic, I can't give a verdict because this is indeed just personal preference. So no verdict here. Character generation might also come down to personal preference. Depends. Do you want more customizability choices? Are you a somewhat experienced role player and like to tweak your character? Do you like more player agency? Then probably Dragonbane is for you. If you rather have a quick character generation, a beginner friendly method, and you want to give your character a unique touch more through role playing than actual mechanics, Shadow Dark would be for you. And now my verdict for solo play is da -da -da -dum, Shadow Dark. And why is that? Because both systems have a high lethality rate, at least if, if played as written. As a solo player, you often need maybe to run more than one character. And if your characters die a lot, you also don't want to spend a lot of time creating a new character. So... Taking into account the lethality of the games as written, that as a solo player you often have to run more than one character and the quickness of the character creation and advancement process, here my verdict is Shadow Dark when it comes to the creation process. Now, advancement. Well, again, if you want to pref if you prefer more 
player agency by being able to to place your advancement marks where you want to better customize your character. Use Dragonbane. If you don't want to bother too much with thinking about advancement, use Shadow Dark. And now my verdict. Da -da -da -dum -da -dum. For advancement, it is Dragonbane. And this is because in Shadow Dark, advancement actually is pretty dull and unexciting if you do not reach an odd level. Because if you reach an even level, you only get one roll of your hit die and that's it. Advancement done. Maybe if you're a spell casting class, you do know uh, or get to pick some more spells that you know. But other than that, there's not much happening and it's not really an exciting process. If you reach an odd level, however, you get to roll once on your class's talent table in Shadow Dark, which makes advancement a little bit more exciting. But also here you do not have player agency, but this is on purpose. And this is actually what I like about Shadow Dark. I call it this elegant simplicity because it's also very easy to, to design classes for Shadow Dark or um, yeah, you don't need to to um, be afraid that you basically make a wrong character or advancement choice. So, um, but still for advancement, it is Dragon Bane as a solo player and also as a somewhat experienced role player, advancement in Shadow Dark, if you do not get a talent role, is a pretty dull and unexciting event. I'm sorry, but I have to say that. Then we come to Combat and Lethality. And here, for me, it is pretty easy. The verdict is Shadow Dark. And that is because I do, I do like combat in role-playing games, but I don't want combat to be a chore. I also think that I have a good enough imagination to, to play theater of mind. It is still exciting for me. And especially as a solo player, I need combat to be fast. I do not want to to worry too much about special abilities of certain enemies or complicated stats. So again, this is a solo player's verdict. Combat, it is Shadow Dark hands down. I like, and the combat rules in Shadow Dark literally are like two pages. So combat, Shadow Dark. Lethality, they're both like about equal. Now magic, again, and this is not only for solo play, but also in general, my verdict is Shadow Dark. Because I like the simplicity of the system. And this also is maybe I'm a little biased because I don't really like to play spellcasters. I hardly ever play spellcasters. They don't really appeal to me. I don't know why. It's just a personal thing. Everybody has favorites. So I don't really care about magic systems in general. But they're a necessary evil of, of role-playing and fantasy games, if you will. So I prefer not only for solo gaming, but in general, I prefer simple magic systems where you do not have to look up a lot of complicated spell descriptions, keep track of spell slots and, and all that kind of stuff. So magic, again, Shadow Dark. Now, Encumbrance. And here... Maybe you guessed it from my comparison. Also, Shadow Dark. I do like the item slot system that they or gear slot system that they both use, but I think Dragon Bane is unnecessarily overcomplicating things by artificially reducing your gear slots by having your strength, and then introducing some fiddly mechanics to compensate for that. And this is what I don't like. I mean, encumbrance shouldn't really take a big part in your game anyways. At least this is my opinion. It should be reasonable. You should be able to carry what is reasonable. But if you do track encumbrance, I think a gear slot system is good. And here I have to say Shadow Dark. All right. Now the other stuff. That is, again, I think, personal preference. 
But here I would go with Dragonbane because I think it is pretty a uh, pretty unique thing with these monster attacks and like I said because I think the unique thing of playing in real time is nothing that really appeals to me and I don't think it's pretty pretty useful in in um yeah in, in actual play. So for me here I would go with Dragon Bane here. And I think that's it. So my verdict, I made a little list here. So um, I came down Shadow Dark for solo play with four points for combat, for encumbrance, for magic, and for, I think, character creation because of the high lethality. Dragon Bane, I had two points because of the uh, other stuff and the advancement. And now one important thing, I gave Dragon Bane one bonus point because I think you also have to look at value for money. And here, this is a beautiful book. I mean, it's a hardcover book. It has like this silver printing. It has the nice logo. It has a ribbon. It is a beautiful book. And it is full of creation tools for the GM but it is also and I'm not talking about international shipping I'm comparing dollar prices here it is $59 so for $59 you get a book and that is it the Dragon Bane boxed set I looked it up on amazon.com so that I got US prices I think is around $42 for this boxed set yes it is soft cover but you get a soft cover rule book, you get a soft cover adventure book, you get a map, you get standees, cardboard standees, you get a complete set of nicely looking green dice, and you also get some props, initiative cards, treasure cards, item cards, and you get this all for 42 bucks. There's, this is a great value for money. So I gave a bonus point to Dragon Bane for that. I mean, I do love this book and I treasure it because uh, for me it was like 80 euros with shipping and, and, and import taxes and 55 euros. So I treasure this book. It is a very nice looking book. And um, yeah, I have a special, <laughs> if you want to call it that, connection to it because it's like the most expensive role-playing book that I have bought. But if you just look... At value for money, I'm sorry, $59 for a book is not a good value for money. That is just my opinion. Um, your opinion might differ, but this is why I gave a bonus point value for money for Dragon Bane. But still, for solo gaming and for the things that I think are important to me as a solo gamer, I would go with shadow dark but i like both games and you can see that i like both games because i used both games to play star wars with it and this is like <laughs> for me like um if i care about a system i think of a way to play star wars with it because star wars is also one of my favorite franchises at least in the pre-disney area it was so um yeah that is my first comparative review of Shadow Dark versus Dragon Bane from a solo gamer's perspective. So um, yeah, I think or I hope it made sense to you. Um, now you know where my preferences lie for the reasons that I stated. But again, they're both good games. So thank you for watching and have a wonderful remaining weekend as always. Stay safe and stay healthy and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.